Hello Patrons, here we are at the post-game for Game 6 where we play Deserted Market against the Cleanse of the World and the Long Drawn Death. So, in front of them we have the markers that were scored. I scored 4, giving me 12 coins to my stored income. My opponent, 3, so they get 9 coins to their stored income. What we're just going to do now is run through the 6 sections and do all the post-game stuff. First bit we come to is the injured fighters. So I lost my crossbow armed marked person. I'm gonna roll and see what they get. Ooh, a double one. So they get a two, which means they will not only survive, but they will get um, an experience, or no, not experience point, they will get a skill as well. So we'll come to that a bit later. Next for my opponent, they're gonna roll for their apprentice and get six. That's, that's not too bad, they're fine. They just missed the next game. Then they're going to roll for the Fanatic with the Axe and see what they get. Ooh, an 8. So they need to roll another dice, so I'm just going to get them to roll one of them again. So with that one, they have a broken leg, which means that they can, what was it, only move and charge into combat up to 4 inches instead of the normal 6. But they will also miss the next game as well. Next we come to experience and skills. Now I have a skill for this model because I rolled a two on the injuries. So they get an eight, which would, oof, that one seems to be getting eight. So they get danger dodger, which adds a plus one inch when diving for cover or using a fight or flight reaction. Now my opponent, their marked person with the bow is also gonna get to roll because they've accumulated enough experience. They get tough as leather, so that marked person there now has four wounds as opposed to three, which is the maximum amount of wounds that they can get, which is actually really quite good for a marksman model. For my income gathering, I will get a grand total of four dice because of my alchemist surviving, winning the game, and the two models removed. So with that, I have got... 12, which I'll also add to the 12 I got from the tokens, so I have an additional 24 to add to my stored income. Next we come to my opponent, who will only get two dice because they removed one model and their alchemist survived. Mm -hmm. So they get three, which they will add to their nine that they've got, giving them a plus 12 to their stored income. As we have now done the income gathering, we head on to recuperation. So for me, I'm gonna roll my dice. On a five, six, I get a free cultist. No, I don't get a free cultist this time. For my opponent's recuperation, they have decided to pick this model to see if they can improve their resistance. So they're now going to roll a dice. Ooh, on a two, that means nothing happens in the next game. If they roll a one, they would be minus one resistance. If they roll a three, four, five, or six, they would get plus one resistance. At least here, it's only just uh, nothing happens. Coming on to the purchasing and hiring section. I'm not buying any new fighters or equipment at this point because I have a few for this group that are simply missing the game. However, my opponent has decided they're going to take these two marks person or marks persons. They're going to take their basic or sorry, they're going to take their daggers away and give them to this model here and this model here. So the alchemist has two daggers and the cultist has a dagger in addition to his basic weapon. And then on top of that, my opponent is going to buy these two models a basic weapon each so the only thing they'll be spending is four coins for two basic weapons so they can give their daggers away to these two instead. Going to the purchasing of concoctions I'm gonna buy four rolls for 12 coins in total and I have got ooh, quite a nice mix there what I'm gonna do is I currently already have a number one so I'm gonna keep that but I'm gonna turn this number two into a number because that's my special number and that turns it into a firewall instead. Now coming to my opponent, they're also going to spend 12 coins for four rolls and they have got two number fours which they can pick and a three and a five. So we're just going to quickly cut the camera and then we will come back to you with what they've chosen. And with that we can see that my opponent has gone for a one and a two to replace those two fours they rolled. Last but not least we come to exploration. So I'm going to roll my two dice, see what I get. I get a 10, which is an old war tunnel. So I get to pick one of my fighters during deployment, put them to one side. After both players are deployed, I can place this model anywhere on the board. However, it cannot be within six inches of a currently deployed enemy fighter. As for my opponent, they're gonna roll. Ooh, and they have a two. So they have dodgy map distribution. After both players have finished deploying their fighters, pick 
two of your opponent's fighters, you may make a normal six inch move with them before the game begins. So they can disrupt two of my fighters into sort of moving into a corner or away from where I plan to put them. With that, we come to the end of the post game for game six. Join us on Sunday where we will go into game seven. I haven't quite decided which groups we're gonna play off against each other, but I'm gonna sort of sit down and work it out and see which one which one will be the most interesting. As it currently stands, the Long Drawn Death is a bit few in number and models that can attend, so we might have a more objective heavy game for them when they get their turn. But thank you very much for joining us and we will see you in the next video.